Welcome to the CES call. It's May 10th, so 2023. Uh, we have one topic on the agenda. Um, Nicolo and Luca have proposed a small um, contentious uh, <laughs> proposal on the uh, proposal that they're presenting next week at plenary. Um, I have related Luca's reasoning to Mark, and Mark is willing to concede. Um, but I will, but so let's recap. So this can be a really quick meeting, I think. <laughs> and uh, Luca, do you want to present your reasoning in your own words? Sure. Um, yeah, so the concern is that the module, I, I forget what we call it, module source import proposal um, adds a new abstract module source intrinsic uh, that is the prototype of all module source objects, be it the ECMA 262 module source object, which is not yet part of any proposal. And that's the problem. I will get to this in a second. Um, and the WebAssembly.module object. And this is like, right now, it, the only thing that is on this is a like two-string tag. Um, but in the future, this may be extended with um, bindings and other things that you may want to reflect um, off a module source. Um, the concern we had right now is that originally the this proposal was going to introduce the module source object but without any capabilities and no constructor um, so essentially it would be an object that does nothing and you can only get through syntax um through like through import source something from a js file um i think this is going to be very hard to, uh, to to try to convince the committee of it being useful um, because Again, it is not useful. It, is, it does nothing. Uh, so we have, we're, we are planning to drop this. And in the current spec text, um, we are not proposing the introduction of the module source object for JavaScript anymore. Uh, this leaves the problem that the abstract module source still exists, this intrinsic, um, but it is now not reachable through global this anymore because um, usually it would be reachable through module source dot prototype, um, and now it will not. This may be a problem for SES because, um, yeah, SES would like all intrinsics, all new intrinsics to be reachable through global this. Um, but the reason that I think my argument that this is not a concern is that the only way to create, to, to get access to this module source object or this abstract module source intrinsic is through the host webassembly.module object, um, which within the context of an SES uh, compartment, you cannot get access to like there's no syntax which creates a new um, module source object without the host loader being involved um, and because compartments have their own host loader um, there's no way to leak a webassembly.module object and by extension abstract module source into a compartment that's the argument wow interesting that's quite quite complex but makes sense I mean, it feels more SES specific than how I was hoping we would draw this kind of conclusion. So, but I'm also fine with this conclusion, personally. Yeah, I think I think my my reaction very much echoes Dan's, um, which is, uh, I concede that there's no safety violation here, uh, and that in some operational sense. It is not violating the line that we'd like to draw, but it makes the line um, much hard, much the line that we've drawn um, much more subtle and hard to explain, and therefore much less vivid as a line in the sand not to cross. Um, uh, the problem is that that you know no new intrinsics. Um, that are that are not reachable from the global is you know, by property name navigation uh, is a simple rule. Uh, this one really involves um, uh, relaxing that rule by reasoning very specifically about what it takes to reach them uh, and saying that basically from the language of evaluable strings, it's not a new, it's not reachable. And uh, therefore, with regard to the safety concern motivating the line in the sand, 
um, the you know the specific safety concern from a particular piece of engineering, um, uh, it's effectively not a new reachable intrinsic. Uh, but um, uh, with all you know, having stated that discomfort for the record, uh, I do concede, and um, uh, for this case, but. I, I would like us to sort of, I would like us to generally remember that the line going forward should as often as possible just be the simple, easy to explain line. So question, do we have feedback from Jordan Harbend about this? Because I thought he wanted a way to access the brand check without having to import a WASM module. I think he, it was not, he was not, so much concerned about, um, I think what he was more concerned about was he wanted to be able to access the brand check for all sources without having to import each of the sources. But I think- Oh yeah, that's accessible. Sources, okay. Just by walking the WebAssembly.module prototype chain without importing anything. That's the- Yeah, it's, it's still accessible. And then like later we'll add other access points for the environments that don't have WebAssembly once there are, okay. Yeah. Um, so okay. the, the the thing like the, the this is the other thing I wanted to bring up real quick just for completeness. Um, the other thing that we did consider um, was to have this abstract module source be like directly be on global this like global this dot abstract module source. Um, but we we yeah just we didn't want to do this um, because it's ugly and uh, once we in, do introduce module source it's sort of like completely unnecessary and. I don't know. I don't like ugly language words, especially if there's a string somewhere in the thing that says abstract module source. I think people would be reminded of Java too much. The um, yeah, the rest of this is that what in uh, one thing that mitigates the severity of this particular relaxation of the rule is that it is a very temporary relaxation of the rule. The when I, I think that, but it also forces our hand going forward that when the uh, when we bring module declarations into the language, we must bring in the module source global um, in order to satisfy the need for CES. Um, uh, could you walk me through that logic? Because that's kind of news to me. Yeah, the way this works is that we need to be able to access the, the abstract. Uh, CEST needs to be in a position where it can harden module source and the abstract module source prototype um, because those are shared intrinsics that are now undeniable because there will be syntax that reveals them. Uh, are you talking I, about I can clarify. module I can source clarify. or module? I can clarify. Uh, like if module expressions and module declarations will have a source property that is a module source object, then we uh, will need that model source on the global disk. Yes, okay. Uh, it's more than that because this proposal makes it possible to import phase source of a module declaration. Oh, uh, clever. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, so the other, yeah, the other thing is that we could uh, make that throw. That's what yes. we'll do for JavaScript at first. Yes. Uh, yes, that I, is the I, I, Yeah, I, I, think, I think this is somewhat, um, somewhat mitigated by the fact that any introduction of the concept of module sources in the language, like module sources for JavaScript will like, will like, will coincide with the introduction of the module source global. I don't think there's any, like we have no proposals in the pipeline um, or even like abstractly thought about which would introduce the concept of a module source without introducing a module source global. Right, or at least there's consensus among us on the module harmony call, but right. that's so, how we proceed. Given, given all this detailed conditional thought on the nature of module source as a future global, uh, do you think you'll address this at all in your presentation? Because it's not addressed very detailed in a very detailed way in Nicola's presentation. That would be the other place to possibly put it. Yeah, um, I, I think we will... We will mention it, um, but I don't want to dive into into this um, too much, just because I think that um, 
it will distract from from the core point. Um, I will definitely mention the existence of of the abstract module source prototype. Um, and if somebody does bring up the concern, and maybe Mark, you want to bring up this concern at plenary um, about the reachability, I can elaborate on why this is not a problem for us. But uh, I, so, I don't want to so, proactively um, use up time. So um, I will be, I, I will bring it up bring it up if, at plenary. Uh, so given that I will, and that, that thereby you can predict that I will, uh, you might as well go ahead and prepare slides uh, to okay. talk about it. <laughs> Sure. I, I will prepare slides. I think, yeah, I think bonus slides to explain these things will be, it'll just reach a greater percentage of the committee than if you just talk it through in the air. Sure. Okay. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be in the main presentation, just something you can reference afterwards. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Title, Mark's slide. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's like great. I, I will. I will call it that. Uh, okay. I um. I think that we've chased this topic to ground. Does anybody wish to discuss anything further? Um. Uh, I gave some feedback in the module harmony room to 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 Luca and Guy on the presentation. Uh, is there anything we should discuss about that? Luca already like thumbs it up. And in particular, like the conversation internal to Bloomberg was kind of mirroring a bunch of the conversation in the committee in terms of like, oh, but, you know, did you really think through the, the long term and think about the downsides? It's like, yes. Um, but how, then how do you express that? I'd, yeah. And I was I was kind of responding like, I have no idea what kind of actionable feedback to give to the, to the presenters about this, because I don't know. Um, yeah, this kind of I, I goes for Nicolo as well. Yeah, I, I think it may be useful if we do if we ensure that Nicolo's presentation is first, and because that'll give the background and the 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 expectation that we have thought about the cost cutting concerns here, and that like this is not we're not all like sitting in our own corners and not talking to each other, but like we're very actively talking to each other and have thought through these cases. Um, I think that should alleviate most of the concerns you brought up. Um, I think the one about um, engaging implementers, I, I very much agree with. It would be great um, to get one or more implementers on to, to come to the module harmony meetings um, to discuss. Um, it's it's great that we have Dan Miner here, and I guess we especially need, uh, yeah, I guess we especially need Chrome and Safari and all other implementers, but also including browsers. Yeah, I guess specifically the Agoric people, have they been in the loop? Uh, not Agoric, the <laughs> modable people, the modable people, have they been in the loop about this? It would probably uh, be good to reach out to as well. But if it if it could be something different from the module harmony calls, oh. because here we're like working out all the details, I mean, or the SES calls, such as this one, uh, we're working out all the details here. Uh, whereas uh, we would just kind of want to give an overall presentation of this space with a focus on implementation aspects to okay. the implementers. Oh, I think, but... Justin, are you talking to us or do you want to mute otherwise? Yep. <laughs> I think I have a button for this. In any case, um, it's a good idea. I think that uh, the module harmony calls were organized at the behest of an implementer. Um, I'm totally, I, the agenda, we can use the meeting for that purpose, I think. Uh, we just need to, um, maybe we need to put together an invitation for a specific date. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, I think that would be great because then I can invite some people from Mozilla that are more actively involved in implementation of modules beside myself. Um, oh, great. Yeah. Thanks so for that, Daniel. Uh, so uh, I guess that the way we do that is that uh, we would uh, work out amongst ourselves what day that's going to be. I'm, I'm 
like perhaps the meeting immediately following plenary um, uh, or, or a week thereafter in any case and um, shoot an email out to a, a group of implementers. Maybe it would be useful at plenary to reach out to get contacts of people who are interested in attending that meeting. So I don't have a list of email yeah, we, implementers. <laughs> uh, yeah, we probably want to figure out the date working with them because maybe they won't be available for one or other particular date. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess we can work this all out in the module harmony chat. Okay. Sounds great. All right. Um, Anything further for this meeting? All right. It has, yeah, we, uh, I failed to follow up on my previous action item to uh, get in touch with Garrity about finishing the Shadow Realms proposal. Uh, has, has he been coming to some of these meetings? I've been pretty irregular about attending SES. No, Nicola. Check, check their head. At, at least for models, Carrie just stopped attending the meetings oh. for, for a while. Uh, but right. what about SES? This is like an SES topic oh. to you. Okay, uh, Carity shows up here um, on occasion, sure. Okay, so I, I just need I, to I increase my frequency something. so that we can coincide. I think it's probably good to reach. Uh, if there's a particular meeting you want to talk about that, um, maybe the one after next week, uh, we can we can send Carity a ping. We have his Slack. <laughs> which which Slack? It because that's uh, we should we should cut this out of the recording this whole this whole segment because it's kind of awkward. Yeah. But which Slack should is best to use? Uh, or... we, we have a, a company to company. Um, oh, privileged. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, if somebody had um, anticipating this, somebody does have the ability to pause the recording. Um, well, and that was a great Cess call. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.